Today we are going to talk about the most interesting topic of biology of class 12th that is principles of genetics. As you all know that we resemble our parents. We have certain features that are similar. Similarly, a mango tree has a seed which gives rise to a mango plantlet only. How is that possible? It is all due to transmission of characters or traits from one generation to the other. And this is what genetics is all about. Genetics is the branch of biology that deals with the study of heredity and variations. So the branch of biology that deals with the study of heredity and variations is called as genetics. Heredity means transmission of characters from parents to next generation. Whereas variations mean the differences which are found between the parents and the progeny. We study about the differences as well as the similarities in genetics. Now what is the reason for the development of these variations or differences? How do they arise? What is the factor which controls it? The variations arise due to two reasons. There are two reasons for the differences which are found in the next generation. The first reason is mutation, that is a sudden change in the characters and second is recombination, that is the combinations which are formed after the result of sexual reproduction. So heredity and variations are the basis of genetics, the branch of biology that we are going to discuss in detail today. Gregor John Mendel is called as the father of genetics because he was the first one to talk about the laws of inheritance and his laws are still known as the Mendel's laws of inheritance and they are still valid. He worked on a plant called as garden pea which is biologically called as scientifically called as Pisum sativum. Now why did Mendel choose Pisum sativum or garden pea for his experiments? What is the reason behind it? There are four reasons for choosing garden pea for his experiments. Mendel chose garden pea or pisum sativum for his experiments because of two reasons. The first reason was the pea or the pisum sativum has got very short life cycle. Since for the study of inheritance one has to study lot many generations, so the plant, the scientific plant, the control plants, the experimental plant has to have a very short life cycle. Second reason for choosing Pisum sativum or garden pea for his experiments was garden pea had many contrasting identifiable which were easily identified traits or characters. For example, this garden pea consists of some tall plants as well as some short plants. The flowers may be red, the flowers may be white, the color of the seed may be yellow or green. So they were easily identifiable phenotypic traits, the 
the traits were very, very clear and very easy to study. And the third reason was, it was easy to cross pollinate. Naturally, Pisum sativum or garden pea is self pollinating, but due for the experiments, it is easy to cross pollinate. This was one of the reasons for choosing garden pea for his experiments. So these three reasons are very valid reasons that why did Mendel choose only pea for his experiments. Now before we start with the laws of inheritance given by Mendel, let us talk about the terminology that is used in genetics and that is very important to understand because we are going to use these terms when we explain or when we discuss the laws of inheritance. We will discuss the terms which we come across when we talk about the laws of inheritance. The first term is gene. When Mendel was studying garden pea for his experiments, at the time neither the chromosomes were discovered nor genes were known to anybody. So he referred to genes as factors. So when we talk about factors, we know that we are talking about the genes in today's context. Mendel called them as factors, that there is something called as factors which pass on from one generation to the other. This is referring to actually genes in today's context. So the first term is gene or factor. Gene is the biological unit of inheritance. And it is made up of DNA. So the unit, the factor, the thing which is transferred from parents to the next generation and which is responsible for the passing of characters from parents to the next generation is known as gene and at that time Mendel called it factor. Second term is allele or allelomorph. Alleles are alternative forms of the same gene. It is very easy to explain. For example, in garden pea, the height of the plant has got two alleles. Some are tall, some plants are tall and some are short or dwarf. So there are two alternative forms of the same gene that is to control the height and these two genes are alternative and these are called as alleles. So alleles are alternative forms of same gene. For example, for the height of the plant, there are two alleles. One is tall and the other, uh, other is dwarf. The third term is phenotype and genotype. When we describe the external appearance of any organism, that is called as phenotype, whereas the genetic makeup of an organism is called as genotype. For example, if I ask you to describe a tree, you might say it has got a very, it is a very high plant, very uh, long plant and at the same time, it has got many branches, green leaves, red flowers and so on. So whatever you explain by simply appearing by appearance is called as phenotype and genotype is the genetic makeup of an organism that means what types of genes are there, are they are dominating or all they are recessive. So phenotype means external appearance whereas genotype means genetic makeup. Next term is homozygous and heterozygous. Homozygous means when same type of allele is duplicated, wherein heterozygous is 
when there are dissimilar alleles. I'll show you with the help of an example. The height of the plant can be tall or it can be short and the plant may, be, may have two alleles of same type that is capital T, capital T or may have capital T, small t. So, this kind of condition is called as homozygous where same allele is duplicated wherein this condition is called as heterozygous wherein the same allele is not duplicated. We have dissimilar alleles or dissimilar factors or dissimilar pairs of genes. This is pure or homozygous and this one is heterozygous or hybrid. Next term is monohybrid, dihybrid and trihybrid cross. A cross in which single character is considered for experiments that is monohybrid cross wherein two, ex two ex uh, characters are considered that is dihybrid and when three characters are considered at the same time that is called as trihybrid cross and it can be easily understood with the help of an example. A tall plant if is crossed with a dwarf plant this kind of cross is known as monohybrid cross because we are just considering the height of the plant at this moment. A tall plant with red flowers, a tall plant with red flowers when crossed with dwarf plant with white flowers, this is called as dihybrid cross because we are taking two characters at the same time. One is the height of the plant and the other one is the color of the flower. Similarly, for trihybrid cross, we can have three characters which are considered or taken into account at the same time. For example, a tall plant with red flowers and round seeds is crossed with a dwarf plant with white flowers and wrinkled seeds. So, we have taken three characters at the same time and that is called as trihybrid cross. Next term is back cross and test cross. Now what is back cross? When we cross two plants and we get the first generation and we again cross it with either of the parents that is called as the back cross. So, when we take a tall plant and we cross it with the dwarf plant, we get the first generation and to get the second generation, we cross it with either of the parent, either with the tall plant or with the dwarf plant which is one of the parents. So, this is called as back cross. Why is it called as back cross? Because we are using either of the parents for crossing to obtain the second generation. Test cross. When the first generation, this F1 is first generation, is crossed only with the recessive parent, that is called as the test cross. You can see it here. This is the first generation and we have back crossed it with the recessive parent. Recessive parent is the one this is the dwarf plant and when we cross it with the recessive parent, this is called as test cross.
we can make a very simple statement here to understand this particular type of concept that is all back crosses are not test crosses but all test crosses are back crosses. All test crosses are back crosses, but all back crosses are not test crosses because test cross is only with the recessive parent, whereas back crosses with either of the parent, either the dominant parent or the recessive parent. Before we discuss about the laws of inheritance, it is very important to understand how Mendel did the cross pollination in garden pea because garden pea is naturally self pollinated. So, how he cross pollinated two plants? You all are familiar with the structure of flower that you have read in lower classes, whereas we know that the male part is called as androsium, which consists of anther and filament, wherein the female part is gynesium, consisting of stigma. style and ovary. So, this is the male part wherein gynesium is the female part. Since pea plant is a bisexual flower, bisexual flower means which has got both the parts in the same flower, both male and female in the same flower that is androsium as well as gynesium in the same flower. To prevent self pollination what Mendel did was he cut the anthers at a very young stage before the pollen grains could mature. He cut the anthers at a very very young condition that means in the bud condition only and this cutting was called as emasculation. I repeat this first step in cross pollination was emasculation. E means removal masculation means male part. So, here Mendel removed the male part that is the anther at a very young stage. Now, why was it done? It was done to prevent self pollination. So, the very first step towards cross pollination was to cut the anther at a very young stage and this step is called as emasculation and this was done to prevent self pollination. The second step was covering or bagging the emasculated flower. So, the flower was covered with a poly bag and this is the second step which is called as bagging. Now, what was the purpose of covering the emasculated flower? It was to prevent the contamination from unwanted pollen grains. There might be pollen grains coming from some undesirable plant which we do not want and they can come and lie over stigma and fall on stigma and bring about cross pollination. So, to prevent that or to, con to prevent the contamination of stigma from unwanted pollen grains, this step was done that is bagging that is covering the emasculated flower with a polythene bag. The last step in cross pollination was
bringing pollen grains from desired plant. Once the stigma becomes mature and it is mature to receive the pollen grains, the poly bag was removed and the pollen grains were brought from the desired plant and they were dusted over the stigma of the emasculated flower. This way Mendel did the cross pollination in Pisum sativum or P garden pea wherein first of all the male part was removed at a very young stage that is emasculation. The emasculated flower was covered with a poly bag to prevent contamination and third the desired pollen grains were brought from the desired plant once the stigma became mature to receive the pollen grains. Mendel chose studied seven pairs of contrasting characters and he found after his experiments that only one character appears in the first generation and he called it as a dominant character and the other one which did not appear in first generation that was called as recessive trait. Now what are these seven characters which Mendel studied? The first trait was the height of the plant wherein only tall parents or tall plants were obtained in first generation. So this trait was called as dominating wherein the short plants did not appear in first generation and they were called as recessive. Second trait was the color of the flower. Red color was dominating over white. Third character was color of seed. Yellow color was dominating over green. Shape of seed, some seeds were round and some were wrinkled and the round shape was dominating over wrinkled. Next trait was position of pod. Pod is the fruit of pea plant wherein the seeds are found and that is called as pod. So position of pod was another trait that Mendel studied and Axial condition was dominating over terminal condition. Axial condition means when the pod is in the axis of leaf and terminal condition means when it is found at the tip of the plant. Next character was color of pod and green color. was dominating over yellow color of the seed. So these were the traits that were studied by Mendel for his experiments and out of these some were dominating. Dominating means the ones which appeared in the first generation and some were recessive the ones which did not find place or which did not appear in the first generation. After studying all the experiments or after making all these studies Mendel finally gave three laws of inheritance which are today known as Mendel's laws of inheritance. We will talk about these laws one by one. The very first law is law of dominance. According to the law of dominance out of two contrasting pair of characters only one appears in the first generation and that is called as dominant trait. The other one which remains hidden or which is not expressed 
is called as recessive trait. We can understand this with the help of a very simple example. He crossed pure tall plants with pure dwarf plants. Now, when we say pure tall plants, that means we have to write the same allele that is capital T, capital T and the capital letter is used to express the dominating trait and pure dwarf will represent by small t and small t. These are the parents and we represent parents by P1. So, when Mendel crossed pure tall plants with pure dwarf plants, in first generation he found that 100 percent plants were tall. That means the character of tallness is dominating over the character of dwarfness or shortness. Similarly, all the other six characters were studied and only one trait appeared in the first generation and that is what is called as the law of dominance. Before we make the cross, we can make the gametes also. And during the gamete formation, the number of chromosomes is reduced to half. So, capital T, capital T has to be written as only capital T and we can encircle it to show that these are gametes. Small t here, these are gametes. And this is first generation, wherein the 100 percent plants were found to be tall. This showed that the character of tallness is dominating over the character of shortness or the dwarfness. This is what is called as the law of dominance. We can define it in this manner. Out of two contrasting pairs of characters, only one appears in the first generation and that is said to be dominating. The other one which does not show in first generation or which remains hidden or whose effect is masked or covered which is not expressed that is called as recessive trait. This is about the first law of inheritance that is law of dominance. We can take any example out of the seven traits which were shown earlier and only one trait has to be shown in the first generation because Mendel found only one trait in the first generation and that was called as dominating the other one was called as recessive.